Let's go to our guests now. And from Geneva, we have the first UN rapporteur to visit Venezuela since the 1990s, Alfred de Zayas. From Toronto, Canada, Alessandra Polga, who is a spokesperson for the opposition party Vente Venezuela. And completing our panel is Tomaso de la Longa. He is the spokesman for the president of the International Red Cross and Red Crescent. Thanks all three so much for joining us. Alfred, I'll begin with you uh, in Geneva. First, we know that aid has become a political issue in Venezuela. However, President Maduro really does consider aid from the United States as a weapon of war of sorts. Is this aid, do you think, part of some kind of US strategy to manipulate the situation in Venezuela or is Maduro using aid, as the opposition has claimed, to blackmail his own people? When I was in uh, Venezuela in November, December 2017, I had the opportunity of speaking uh, with members of the National Assembly, Fede Cámaras, uh, non-governmental organizations like Provea that are very critical uh, of the government. I also spoke uh, with uh, a dozen ministers and, of course, with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Uh, one of the points that I always made is that it is uh, important to solve the uh, scarcity in uh, food and uh, medicines as fast as possible. I convened all of the UN agencies to a meeting in which we discussed how to give advisory services and technical assistance uh, to the government, which has been given and is being given today. Uh, right. All ministers, no, everyone agrees including that the aid is no, It's important for me to clarify that uh, the government, of course, wants to accept humanitarian aid. Of course, all the ministers welcome humanitarian aid. They have just received last week 933 tons of uh, humanitarian aid from China, from India, from Bolivia, from Cuba, from Turkey, etc. And just a couple of days ago, 300 Tons of aid came in by plane from Russia. So they are perfectly uh, welcoming this kind of aid. But the United States has conducted, and this is well documented in my report to the UN Human Rights Council, has conducted a, an economic war against uh, Venezuela and imposed sanctions that are a major, and I repeat, a major cause of the economic crisis that the people are suffering. So what is quite clear to me is that a tormentor, a torturer, cannot just simply mutate into a good Samaritan. It is unacceptable for the United States to freeze $30 billion worth of assets of the government of Venezuela, and then to offer $20 million so that uh, they can appear like the good guys. Now, this is such bad faith that uh, I can thoroughly understand why uh, Maduro is not willing to accept aid from the United States. Maduro will accept uh, aid from Switzerland, will accept aid from uh, the United Nations, from uh, the Red Cross, from whomever, but not from the one country that has the most responsibility in creating this crisis. Okay, understood. Alessandra, I just have to ask if you're on the same page. Uh, absolutely not. And tell us why. Well, um, I'm a regular Venezuelan citizen living, forced to live in the exile. Um, we have a non-profit organization. Um, we work specifically with the victims uh, from the public demonstration in Venezuela uh, on 2017. 
um, most of them are uh, shoot shoot down, and they have they have been wounded for um, from the government uh, repression. They are paralyzed, and it's something that I had to be in touch every day directly with the people of Venezuela. I'm the one on charge to uh, bring the resources for food, medical treatment, surgeries, and that kind of thing. Um, I still have relatives in Venezuela, friends in Venezuela, and we be in touch daily, permanently. Okay. Um, but let me ask you this question, though, more pointedly. Do you accept that the United States providing aid for Venezuela isn't so much about a humanitarian interest there? It is part of a political strategy on behalf of the U.S. to, as the government and others say, outside the country as well, as a strategy to interfere in Venezuela's politics and change the political landscape of Venezuela. Now, you may think that the United States wants to change it for the better, and that's fine, that's your opinion, but do you agree at least that the United States is involved in this aid scheme for reasons other than humanitarian assistance? No, I don't see so, because it's not only the United States who is involved in uh, re uh, give uh, humanitarian aids to Venezuela. They are involved in uh, different organizations, not just from the United States. Is the government of Colombia? Is the government of Brazil? Is the uh, is a few governments in the MFR that are helping and supporting the crisis in Venezuela? Because okay, but let, let's they focus are on U.S. aid because that is what's at stake right mm -hmm. now. It's President Trump making threats against Venezuela, and the accusations that the United States specifically is using the aid they're sending as a tool. Do you agree that the no, United States? No. no. So the United States no, has purely humanitarian agree. interest no. in Venezuela. No. Uh, yes, in this case, yes. And I mean, do you and accept though, you... that the United States has a somewhat poor record in Latin America as it has the history in Chile, for example, Nicaragua, Guatemala before? Do you feel that this time the U.S. agenda is different? Um, the action are different. The, the situation in Venezuela is not, the, there is not precedent in Latin America. It's the first time that the, the situation that we have right now in, in, in Venezuela is a, is a group of uh, condition that make what's happened right now in Venezuela. And um, uh, we receive support even for Canada. I live in Canada, and I work with the government of Canada, and we receive um, uh, 53 million of humanitarian aid from Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, we receive um, um, donation from the European Parliament. Uh, we are not talking just United States. Um, okay. I really, I, we are, we are talking. Let, let me finish, um, please. Uh, we are talking about human beings. This is not. Uh, ideology. This is not um, the one country want to interfere in Venezuela's affair. It's just a try to save people who is dying for starvation and lack of medicine. Okay. Tomaso, I promise to get to you in a second, but I just need to get Alfred's response to that. Alfred, you're hearing from a Venezuelan citizen that there is no precedent for this, that this situation in Venezuela is unique and that the United States has the interest of the Venezuelan people at heart. That's a bit ridiculous. It's like the U.S. having had an interest in the welfare of the Nicaraguans at the time that illegally the United States was using U.S. aid, using uh, the humanitarian pretext to uh, fund and to arm the uh, Contras in the 1980s uh, in Nicaragua. The United States wants regime change, and it's using every possible trick in the book to arrive there. Now, when I went to Venezuela, and by the way, when I was a student at Harvard University, I was a member of the Republican Club. I'm still a member of the Republican Party in the United States. But I reject this kind of interventionism, and I am closer to the approach of pr President Jimmy Carter, whom I know personally. And uh, I am very concerned 
that uh, Trump is running himself into, uh, well, a cul de sac, and uh, he's going to lose face unless he actually uses military force to uh, get that uh, uh, so-called humanitarian okay. aid into Venezuela. But I have, I have, when I spoke, last with the Venezuelan ambassador here in uh, Geneva, because he has contacted me several times since I was the only rapporteur who ever went uh, to uh, Venezuela. Okay. So I have told uh, Valero, for Christ's sake, have the International Committee of the Red Cross distribute any and all humanitarian aid that is offered, whether it's offered by the United States or by anybody else, as long as there's no contraband, as long as there's no abuse and not misuse. As I said, there's a weaponization of Understood. human rights, and there's also a weaponization of humanitarian aid. Let me put that to Tommaso, because let's talk now. Tommaso, I know you don't want to have to comment on the politics so much of the situation here. So let's talk about the actual humanitarian need. And Alfred does suggest something interesting. If the United States does have only the humanitarian interest at heart here, as well as all the other political players involved internationally, why aren't they giving this to the Red Cross, a neutral third party, to distribute all the aid that can be collected to the people in need in Venezuela? Look, actually, uh, as you said correctly, we will not enter in any uh, political discussion. I was in Venezuela a few days ago, last week, and I saw a very difficult and complex situation where needs are growing and sufferance of people is growing. Uh, we, w what we are saying in the last few weeks uh, to all the parties and to all the parties involved uh, without any distinction is that uh, uh, we are deeply concerned that the humanitarian aid uh, is, has been used as a political tool, and uh, we really would like to see humanitarian aid, I mean, all the political parties, uh, to step back and to be sure that humanitarian aid is, again, uh, neutral, uh, guided only by neutrality, impartiality, and independence, and is what we are saying to all the parties uh, involved uh, in, uh, in, in, in Venezuela at the moment. As Red Cross, uh, obviously, we are ready uh, to do our work. We said it all the time. And actually, by the way, I have to underline that we are in country uh, since uh, uh, many years. Uh, and through our national society, the Venezuelan Red Cross, who is running also hospitals and health facilities, but who is also affected itself, itself by this crisis. So again, needs are there. We, are, we saw people suffering, we saw lack of medicine, we saw problems in the health system, we saw problems of uh, uh, lack of food. So our main concern at the moment is how to better serve people in need. And the first thing is that we need to have the right condition to operate on the field, and the right condition must be only having a neutral, impartial, independent way of operating on the field. Only to give you an example, uh, in every part of the world, the Red Cross is dealing with all the parties on the ground, even in extreme situations like a war zone, for instance. But then one of the first things that we want to respect is that the assessment on the ground on the needs of people are made by us, so are compiled by us. Right. And second is that all the humanitarian aid must respect our international standards, because we cannot risk any issue and any problem if we are not involved since the beginning in this humanitarian aid delivery. OK. Tommaso, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. If you can't answer it, I, I, I will understand. Understand. I'm wondering if you, as an impartial observer here, can give us some, some kind of historical context. Because yes, the Venezuelan economy is struggling, but even while GDP was growing uh, in Venezuela in the past, the poverty was absolutely crushing. There were many, many desperately poor people, and hungry people for that matter, in Venezuela. Uh, that was never considered an, an issue of international concern. Now it is because of this massive economic crisis, but if you can tell us, is it much worse now, comparatively, to what the crushing poverty was before, the supporters of Maduro and Chavez say they were given the benefits of their socialist revolution and their lives were improved over the last decade and a half or so. 
Look, first of all, uh, unfortunately, at the moment, every single figure, every single data, every, even the, the wording in this kind of situation in Venezuela has been used from both sides and manipulated. So this is why we are not entering in this kind, uh, in this kind of discussion. I can say that in the last year, I mean, our programs and our activities were, I mean, we're, with the program that we are running now, which, I mean, has not started in the last few weeks, but has started in the last years. Only last year, in our uh, hospitals and outpatient clinics, uh, we, and uh, through our um, local-based activities in communities, we reach almost one million Venezuelans. So again, it's not only, the, the point is not who is, uh, okay. uh, I mean, uh, who who is, who is bad, who is good, or where is, where is the point, where is, I mean, the starting point? The point is that at the moment on the ground there are needs, and we need to Understood. serve these people in right. need. We cannot uh, leave them alone. But, I mean, okay, Alessandra and Alfred, I will give this question to both of you to discuss, because mm -hmm. Donald Trump says that what is happening now in Venezuela is a failure of socialism. But... If millions of people in Venezuela feel their lives have improved because of that same socialism, even while overall GDP uh, may be dropping, is it really a failure? Alfred, let me begin with you. Well, let me say that I am neither a Marxist, nor a communist, nor a socialist. I am a uh, member of the Republican Party in the United States, and I am a believer in the free market. But I'm also a believer in respecting other people's opinions. And if the Venezuelan people, by a landslide, elected uh, Chavez several times, and uh, Maduro, in any event, with a small majority, it is their good right. As early as the 16th century, Francisco de Vitoria okay. said that every nation had the right to choose its government, even if it was not the best one. Right. And the most important here to understand is there is a crisis, an economic crisis, but this economic crisis has been caused primarily by the financial blockade, by the sanctions, by the economic war, not unlike the economic war against Salvador Allende in 1972-73, which ended with the toppling okay. of Allende, his death, and 17 Alfred, years of Augusto Pinochet. I need to give Alessandra final words. <laughs> Alessandra, go ahead. Well, um, I don't want to go with this is a problem of left or right. We we. Um, we have a campaign in Canada that said, uh, ask a Venezuelan. As a Venezuelan, I just can speak in terms that with uh, one million of inflation, when the average Venezuelan just earned $4 per month, and you had to pay $8 for a dozen of eggs to feed an entire family, uh, we are not talking about the failure of political ideologies. We are talking about the failure in economic measure and how this uh, previous uh, government uh, okay. uh, worked with the, the administration of the resource in Venezuela. Okay. <clears throat> Alessandra, um, I'm so unfortunately about, going to have to interrupt you. We are completely out of time uh, for this segment. But I'd like to thank all three of you so much for joining us. I'm sorry we didn't have more time to give each of you, but thanks again.